Hi, I'm Ron Donair, CEO of Intuzi, and I have with me today Will Hare, CEO and founder of Bellavix, a full-service Amazon and Walmart marketplace uh, management agency for retail brands. Will, welcome to the Data Deep Dive. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and dive a little, little bit into the data. Awesome. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you are working on at Bellavix? Excellent. So as the uh, the CEO of Bellavix, I work on uh, a lot of research and development. So we're always looking for new technologies that we can implement uh, to help grow our brands on the different marketplaces, Amazon, Walmart, and Target being the three of them. Uh, and then I also do a lot of the marketing and sales stuff. So uh, podcasts like this, I get the opportunity to talk about uh, our secret sauce and then um, uh, sales, just uh, pitching our business to potential clients and uh, seeing if we're a good fit. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, great. Um, so retailers have a plethora of marketplace options to choose from. You named a few already. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, when I first started, uh, uh, you know, eBay was was a really big one. And, you know, Amazon came on and then, you know, now uh, Walmart and Target are catching up. Um, how does Bellavix help narrow down what the best option for an emerging retailer is? Excellent. I would say for the most part, whether you're brick and mortar or just launching, Amazon's going to be the best place to start. It's, uh, you know, roughly give or take, it's about 50% of all key e-commerce in the U.S. happens on Amazon. They have the logistics uh, system for uh, for shipping. They have the ability to go international if you wanted to test Canada, the U.K., France, Italy, uh, Germany. So a lot of the infrastructures are in place. Amazon's known for shaking up the scene. I mean, the fact that there's a lot of retailers now offering two-day shipping, that Prime Day has become a retail holiday for everyone, and they're working on implementing social media and influencers and email marketing into the ecosystem. It's just a more built-out system uh, compared to Walmart, who's catching up. Uh, but the Walmart philosophy is not shop and buy online it's shop online pick up in the store and it's a different methodology and it's also a different user experience um so that's kind of the gist of it so we would always steer them towards amazon of course their website would probably be number one should be building an audience retention marketing lifetime value getting email addresses um, but if you're looking to test the viability of a product a brand or idea you know it has the audience built in yeah that's it's it, i i our household spends an embarrassing amount <laughs> every single month. Every every time I see this, the piles of boxes sitting in front of my doorstep, I realize that like, you know, everything from dog food to charging cables to like, you know, like oh, I think even like during the pandemic, we were getting like toilet paper delivered at obscene <laughs> prices, you, you know, you know, uh, it's, it, it's definitely, it's definitely the place to be seen, uh, which also then generates just a bunch of data, right? Like all these people are shopping and, there's, you know, you know, per, uh, you know uh, intent data, there is actual purchase history. So endemic data is so powerful on these marketplaces yeah. for promotion and driving ROI. Can you tell me a little bit about how you leverage that with your customer base? Absolutely. So, uh, so hey, we're all guilty of shopping on Amazon. Thanks for supporting my people. Uh, but the endemic data or the data specifically, so Amazon data is probably the most valuable data because it's actual shopping data. It's shopping behavior of I think they're at 80 million prime subscribers in the United States. It's like 200 million worldwide or something like that. Um, so the data is there. And the way we would leverage it is obviously it's all, it's all about audience building. When you get to a certain size, it's like catching people in market. Some of the biggest changes around the iOS update that's really affected Google and Meta. And if you look at the Q4 report, Amazon advertising is up 19%. When compared to Google, Meta, and YouTube, which are all down like 4 to 2% um, compared to last year. Um, so it's really interesting. Why is Amazon's data so powerful is, is our ability to con touch these customers at different touch points in the journey. So if you were working with us, and a lot of times sales stagnation happens when a company works on Amazon, uh, the market continues to grow because people are jumping in. Why not? Um, but what we're seeing is saturation across your pay-per-click, your bottom of the funnel. So how do you differentiate yourself as you kind of lift up above that funnel so that in market, the contextual, the intent, it's all there. You do have to work with uh, Amazon or an agency in the service provider network to get access to the demand side platform or DSP. Mm -hmm. uh, but DSP is one of the levers that we personally leverage to help break sales stagnation. And a lot of it is just building audiences uh, with the data that Amazon's given us and targeting these customers on and off the platforms, whether it's on website, mobile devices, or anywhere else they might be looking 
uh, for your product or your brand. Totally. I mean, that's that's a, that's such a great answer. Yeah, one of the things that uh, Intuzi does actually is we uh, also provide uh, location-based data to nice. get, put into the Amazon DSP. So like, you know, there's certain there's certain categories where you kind of like max out your universe and you have mm-hmm. to kind of incorporate some other first party data from other signal providers. Uh, so it's a really excellent kind of like, uh, uh, you know, like stacking of this endemic data and some yeah. like actual physical world data as well. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah, that's that's really cool. So oh, yeah, and amen to that. Anybody selling anti-aging cream or dog food, like you need to be thinking about maybe not so much the bottom, especially if you're launching. So, I mean, that's to your point, geolocation and being able to be really relevant and targeted with your ads is going to help. So yeah, preach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so can you, without, you know, naming names or getting in trouble, can you get as specific as you can on uh, a client uh, or a use case that you kind of helped and kind of like with some some figures as to like how, you know, how much ROI did they get uh, with your service? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll share a sports equipment manufacturer. Uh, they were in a space. They had a unique product. The owner of the brand is uh, is a designer, and she um, is just wonderful. She really has an eye for it. She has a couple patents because um, of her unique technology around uh, the equipment. Uh, but when she came to us, she was doing some sales on her website, but she was doing about a half a million dollars uh, on Amazon a year, give or take. And what we found is that she was just like a lot of cases we walk into, she was targeting the bottom of the funnel and she wasn't doing it very well. Um, she, you know, one of those cases where her uh, her marketing director was wearing uh, a lot of different hats. And of course, Amazon uh, was neglected and, and, and that's not unusual. Um, you know, it, it's the nature of the beast. Um, so over the course of about six to eight months, we were able to come into the platform and fix the pay-per-click and then start working her way up the funnel. Her listing had a great reviews. They were active on the site for like five years. So these specific listings that sold real well had over a thousand reviews, over 4.5 stars. So the product was clutch. It was on point. It was just her ability to build audiences. Mm -hmm. So we implemented a DSP strategy and it took probably another couple of months after that. Uh, But give or take, we're doing about half a million dollars a month. And we turned her into a $12 million business. Uh, over the course of our first 12 months together. Uh, now we're on year two and uh, we've had a month where we almost hit a million dollars for the month, but we've been creeping around that uh, half a million to three quarters of a million dollars. And where we're at now, it's introducing new products and complementary products. Mm-hmm. And we're working with her on you know where the opportunity is on the platform. Uh, and then she hopefully will build out some of these products to grow with. But that's the perfect example. You know They couldn't figure out what was wrong. They hit sales stagnation and they were just like, oh, it's just not profitable. We don't know what to do. And then our ability to go in and just start working up the funnel at a reasonable, uh, we like to use tacos, total advertising, cost of sale, total spend divided by your total sales because organic is influenced by advertising on Amazon. And we were able to achieve some really stellar results. That's so cool. That's so great. I mean, yeah, what a, what a, a, a gem to be able to just increase, you know, without doing much else, being able to kind of go up that funnel, increase that revenue. Uh, I'm sure they're very, very happy they engage. Yeah, yeah. I think they're gonna be clients for a while. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so you are CEO and founder of your own agency. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of other people out there that are, you know, maybe thinking about making this jump uh, into kind of like starting their own, uh, uh, you know, the, the, their, their own agency, their own brand. Um, what's the best piece of advice you can share with someone, uh, an aspiring entrepreneur that might be considered making that leap? Yeah, just do it. To be honest with you, I wish I did it like five years earlier. I did have the opportunity to work at a lot of agencies. That's kind of my background. I've always been in advertising. So uh, I was able to get some reps in, but uh, I could have definitely started a few years earlier. It really didn't make a difference that I had agency experience because I learned a lot and I didn't understand the operations Mm-hmm. of an agency. Also the concept of working in your business versus working on your business. Do you just want a job, you know, to have something to do that you could kind of control or are you looking to build something bigger? So my best advice would be just get started, you know, just start the process. Once you're in it and you do it, you realize that there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, when I left to start the agency, I had two kids under three and we were paying for daycare and all that other stuff. And you know, we just made it happen and, you know, put put good, good juju out in the universe and it kind of all works out. So uh, don't be afraid to work hard and just chase your dreams. 
That's right, man. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been super informative. If a viewer wanted to get in touch with you to engage with Bellavix, what's the best way of doing so? Yeah, definitely check out our website, bellavix.com. I'm very active on LinkedIn, Will Hair, hair with an E, like the hair on your head. Um, and uh, you can always reach us out at hello at bellavix.com. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Join us next time for another informative session with another founder on the Data Deep Dive.